Okay, round one, we've got the choice. Definitely playing first. Let's see what we got here. All right. Uh, all of our colors, so very thankful for that. We get a very nice turn progression because of that. So super, super happy with how that played out. We actually just have a grip full of warriors and a rush of battle. Yeah, this is probably one of the most ideal hands I think our deck could ask for, since especially considering we don't have that many cheap cards. Uh, cheap creatures especially. We did not table that Mardu Hateblade, I just remembered, which would have been really nice for our deck. But yeah, uh, this hand is... Pretty much ideal. I can't think of a much better hand that our, our deck could do. All right. So we get to go... Air of the Wilds into potentially Horde Chief. If he drops a creature that I don't want to trade with, I might just drop the Captain instead. Oh, well, that's perfect to drop for us to play against, so I think we're pretty happily going to attack into that. Um, all right, so I could play the Captain. I think this is a pretty good opportunity to get our Horde Chief out. So we're going to swing with our Air of the Wilds. We're going to get our Horde Chief down. And next turn we get to play a Kirin, which I think we are going to do. So we're just setting ourselves up for a nice rush of battle at this point. No morph play. Wow. Very good for us. Okay. So I guess we just... Now we just swing team. Now I actually could have Dragon Scale booned our Horde Chief, which would have pumped our Air of the Wilds. Um, but it doesn't seem worth it. I'd rather save the boon for combat tricks. For now, let's just get... Oh, not that one. Let's get our Kirin out there. And pass... All right, so we're playing against Sultai. Kintree Invocation, that's a good play. Sultai Scavenger, also quite good. Uh, I think the plan is... Well, let's see. I rush a battle now. I get in for 4, 8, 12, um, 15... Which is Xaxes, but he's going to be able to block a four power guy and a warrior. So it doesn't really quite do it yet. So I think what we do is just swing with the Air of the Wilds and the Kirin. And then we drop a Tusk Guard Captain and pass. So... Getting very close to Rush of Battle being lethal. Could have Savage Punch, which would be quite good, but not the end of the world. Alright, it's a pretty surprising attack, but we'll take it. We're in a pretty good position to take damage here. Disowned Ancestor. Sultai Flare. All right, well, it's pretty good. Pretty good for him there. Let's see what Rush of Battle does for us at this point. So we're resource short, being able to use this. We can Dragon Scale Boon. Can... Let's see, we Rush of Battle now. We have all four power guys, so he blocks a four power guy. Then possibly takes... I guess he can block our warrior still with a flare to preserve that. So, um, not quite digging it just yet. Hmm. 
All right, I think that we just swing with air, horde chief. Well, let's do these four and leave back the warrior. I plan on dragon scale booning this turn, so I kind of want to see how he blocks. It's also going to make our scavenger cheaper. Okay, so I don't really need to bust Boon. Um, I guess I do on the Kirin. If he's going to block like that, I'm just going to bust it on the Kirin. So this does a couple things. It allows us to get in for more damage, which I think is the most important part. But secondly, it sets us up for a better rush of battle. It makes my Scavenger cheaper. It makes him deal immediately with this Kirin. So Savage Punch is going to be something he needs to do. Um, and if he can't, we're in pretty good shape here. Um, so eight damage. Let's say he has become immense. That would be another six. Um, so eight plus six, 14, plus the parapets, 15. So not enough to do lethal. I think we just take it. Could have blocked with the warrior, but I like being able to crack back with that. He could also play Death Frenzy, which would kill a couple of our pretty important guys, but would still let us kill him, I think, with a rush of battle. Although he would gain some life there. He'd gain two life. All right, he could have a pump effect, but I think we're going to just do rush and ideally win this. So Force Away on Alabaster Kirin would still, I think, get us in for too much damage here. Alright. So 4 mana, he was maybe going to show us something, but didn't. So opponent's deck is very good. Have to give him credit for that. Opponent, uh, we like I said, we had like the ideal turn progression. And, I mean, even though we very efficiently beat him down, I think our opponent's deck is quite good. Um, maybe I want the kill shot for something. How good is Death Frenzy against him? Actually, just based on what we saw, Death Frenzy looked pretty awful. I think I'm going to cut Death Frenzy, and I think we're going to bring in kill shot. I'd rather be able to take care of his big threats, because we still can fly over his ground guys and then kill whatever ground guy we can't deal with. I think that's going to work the best for us. Uh, better than Roar of Challenge, I think, as well. So Death Frenzy could still be good against our opponent, but based on that game one, I have a feeling it's not all that good. So, all right, let's go to game two here. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very good hand. As mentioned before, our mana base is the true weakness of this deck. So despite the fact that this is a land-heavy hand with a rush of battle and only one creature, I still think it's worth keeping uh, just because we can play everything. All right. Ancestor turn one. Let's go black. All right. All right, Bonkin is fine. Warriors with our rush of battle should eventually be good for us. All right, just slowly building up his disowned ancestor. I'm okay with that. I'd rather see that than, say, a morph guy. Um, so here's an interesting question. Do I want to do this Sadisi's pet, or do I want to do this Bonkin? I feel like I want to do the Bonkin. But it's still at least a couple turns before I can unmorph it. I still think I'd rather do the Bonkin. The reason being, uh, if I draw something more important, I may not have time later 
to efficiently get that Bonkin down, and I do want to threaten some some high damage uh, by turn five if possible. All right, he's ready to start swinging. And with the flare, quite good. Quite good. All right, Horde Chief. Well, I guess I'd rather, well, if I'd play the pet, that still wouldn't have worked out all that well, I guess. So instead, I think we're just going to do Bonkin and then pass. If he attacks with that flare, I really do have to debate whether I want to double block it or not. Pretty tempted to double block it, but... Oh, right. Well, now I don't have any problems double blocking it. Alright, take our two damage. Double flare, though, is pretty crazy. It's a lot of flaying going on. All right, Ascendancy should be good at some point, but we're just not quite in a position to use it just yet. So I think the plan is sit back and chill, start unmorphing. All right, now he's just in Outlast mode. Kentry Invocation getting a 7-7. Seven, seven. Hmm, it seems difficult. So that's quite good. It's going to be difficult for us to contend with. Opponent has pretty insane board state, as a matter of fact. Um, let's see here. Raider spoils seems okay. I can play. I think the play is Pet Morph plus Horde Chief for no value. But that's going to set us up for a nice ascendancy. So I think we do that. Opponent is looking pretty good right now. No doubt. Alright, Seek the Horizon is probably the best 4-drop I could ask my opponent to play. It did find him his blue source that he was missing, but considering how highly developed my opponent's board state is, I think I'm comfortable here. We're going to take 7 from this Spirit Warrior. Alright, Swiftwing I'm not too concerned about, although sadly that will put the damper on our Abzan Ascendancy. So... I think we're just going to take our 8 here. I am going to have to come up with a solution for that Spirit Warrior at some point, but for now we'll just take a lot of damage and play our Ascendancy. And if we draw a land, play the Raider Spoils as well. Four cards in our opponent's hand, but two of them are lands. All right, land... Well, we did get a land, but not quite the one I was looking for. That's okay. So, we're going to do the Ascendancy now. And we'll pass. So, we have the Sadisi's pet, which should have some pretty good toughness. So, it could swing with the Bonkin, but it doesn't really do anything. It just gets blocked by Ancestor. So, I think instead we're going to have to come up with a good, uh, good game plan for blocks here. All right, Parapet could be a problem eventually. I think this Rush of Battle should be able to help us quite a bit, though. All right, just taking one from the Swiftwing. I think I'm okay with that, so we'll take our one. I'm going to unmorph the pet because I want the lifelinker out there. We'll draw. Ooh, well, it's pretty helpful. Um, still just a bit short of doing what I want to do. 
I think I want to unmorph this bond cannon set up for a rush of battle. So... I can also Abzan charm the spirit warrior. But I need to gain a bunch of life next turn from this raider spoil. So I think we just pass the turn again. I am definitely playing the patient game here, but... I think that ultimately is going to pay off. It's going to have the highest payoff for us. Because if I... Because now I'm in a position where I can unmorph and then next turn charm plus raider spoils. Which I think is going to work the best for us. No attacks. That's interesting. Uh-oh. Villainous wealth? Or a dead drop. All right, well, it's pretty good against us, but I guess at least we get a couple tokens out of the deal. So, all right. Yeah, not ideal, but we're going to have to just live with it. At least we get a couple tokens, I guess. Okay. So, now we unmorph this guy. And draw Dragon Scale Boon. It's pretty good. So we have seven. So I can Raider Spoils, which is going to let me. Well, let me think about this. I can charm away the Spirit Warrior and then Rush of Battle. And these guys become eight fives, which gains us 16 life as well. It's pretty good. And we can attack with these into the swift wing. Yeah, that might be our best. I was also thinking of Abzan Charming. He can double block, but I can kill the flare. He's going to gain a bunch of life too. Um, but I think that's okay. I think we do. I think we got to go for it. So we're going to exile this guy. I just don't want to deal with him anymore. And I think we just rush a battle. And we get to get in for a lot of damage here. Gaining at least 16. He's going to gain a ton of life as well, but I think we got to go for it here. Seems like a good opportunity to do so. He can just chump with a parapet, I'm guessing, but looks like he's going to do some double blocking, which is fine. Not ideal, but fine. So, I'm assuming we want to kill, I think we want to kill the flare now. The reason I want to kill the Flare is I have Raider Spoils to eventually get past this Disowned Ancestor, and that Flare is just going to net him too much life, I think, so i got to go like this. It's not ideal, but this turn seemed like it was going to be a necessity here. We also brought him down to 6 life, which is nothing to scoff at when you have a couple spirits that can come in, plus we have another spirit now, so... Um, I think that worked out ultimately pretty good for us. We're also going to start, we're going to be able to play Raider Spoils and start swinging with our spirits into a Swift Wing, potentially getting the Dragon Scale Boon sort of blowout. He did gain 8 life, I forgot to mention, which is certainly significant. Just outlasting. That's interesting, too. So you got a throttle, maybe? Let's see what he's got. I'm curious. Alright, scavenger. Eh, 
It's a bit of an issue, but I'd still say we're in pretty good shape here. Um, hmm, Kieran's not bad. So I have seven resources, mana rather. Could swing with all of our spirits and whatever one gets swift wing. No, I don't really like it. Could just swing with the Bondkin, play the Kirin, and then pass. Let's do that. I don't want to trade a boon and a spirit for a scavenger. I, I don't really like that all that much. So he just wants to gain more life. I'm okay with that. Okay. Still in pretty good shape here. We got another dude off the board. He can crack back for some damage, but we're setting ourselves up for some big plays here shortly. And doing the Raider spoils is going to let me swing with the Kirin into the Scavenger. So looking okay. We are going to have to take some damage here, but I still like the position we're in. It's a close game. All right, so we throttled it. We get another spirit, which is okay. Did take care of a big dude, though. So we've got some work to do. Interesting. All right. Curious why he didn't block with or attack with the flare. I guess he was worried I was gonna do a bunch of blocks on it. So we have seven mana. I can play Raider's Spoils and swing into his Scavenger with my Kirin. I can also play the Kirin and pass. I can also swing with everything flying, see how he blocks. He has one card left in hand. Could be a Sultai Charm. Should be pretty good against us right here. Um, he could eat a couple tokens though if I swing with everything, which I don't really like. Could just swing Kieran, see how he blocks. But if he has removal and response, it's problematic. If I play the Kieran, I may be taking too much damage, but maybe, well. Swing with Kieran, see how he blocks. All right, let's just swing with Kieran, see how he blocks. I'm willing to walk into his Sultai Charm mostly because I can Alright. Well, that worked out fairly well for us. We got the big threat off the board. We're gonna be able to Raider Spoils. We have a good blocker for his disowned ancestor and flare. We're ahead on the board. He's just in outlast mode. We have a lot of flyers. Grizzly doesn't do anything, so that's a good card for us to see him have. And we are dishing out a lot of damage, so we're in pretty good shape here. And we get to play both our spells, so this turn is going to be really good. We get to Raider Spoils, Swing with Team. He gets to kill a spirit, but he's taken a bit more damage than he think he can afford to. And we get to follow up with another Kirin, which is going to be pretty difficult for him to contend with at this point. So I think he's dead next turn. He's got to come up with some pretty good solutions here. He could Savage Punch and possibly kill one of his four toughness guys. I don't even think he can do that. He needs something to die, though. Um, even with Become Immense, that's 11. He could play two Become Immense, but I'm not going to worry about that, I don't think, so we're just going to take it. All right, Morph, not a concern. Even if it's an Abomination, we're still likely killing him, I think. Although I guess he does gain the life from it if it's an Abomination, but 
we'll make him have it. He would be able to block a token, kill a Kirin, take 579. No, it's still lethal by my count. All right, so we'll swing for the fences here. All right, and it was a Sagu Mauler, which is a good card. So happy to get the victory on that one. Our opponent's deck was pretty awesome. Multiple Sultai Flares, all the four toughness guys you could imagine. Uh, Swiftwing, which was uh, either a good main deck or a good sideboard against us because of the ascendancy. But uh, Raider Spoils had some amazing uh, synergy for us. Dragon Scale Boon played excellent. I loved the rush of battle to gain some life early. So pretty awesome match overall, and we'll see you round two.